Where should you stop your vehicle when there is no limit line? A. At the corner before entering the intersection. B. Just ahead of the corner. C. 10 feet from the intersection. D. If there is no limit line, you don't need to stop. Where should you stop your vehicle when there is no limit line? A. At the corner before entering the intersection. At many intersections, there will be a thick white line painted on the ground to indicate where vehicles approaching the intersection should stop. However, some intersections may not have a limit line. If the intersection has a painted crosswalk, but no limit line, stop before you enter the crosswalk. If the intersection has neither a limit line nor a crosswalk, stop at the corner before entering the intersection. With any turning vehicle, the rear wheels follow a what, then the front wheels. A. Equal path. B. Slower path. C. Shorter path. D. Longer path. With any turning vehicle, the rear wheels follow a, c, shorter path, than the front wheels. The rear wheels of a turning vehicle will follow a shorter path compared to the front wheels. The longer the vehicle or the longer the wheelbase, the greater the difference will be. The main reason why it is important for drivers to know this fact is when driving behind or next to large trucks, buses, and other large vehicles. You may turn right on a solid red light. A. Without stopping completely. B. After coming to a complete stop to yield to pedestrians and other vehicles in the intersection. C. If the traffic light is showing a solid red arrow. D. Even if there is a road sign that prohibits right turns on red. You may turn right on a solid red light. B. After coming to a complete stop to yield to pedestrians and other vehicles in the intersection. Unless otherwise prohibited by a road sign or traffic signal, drivers can make a right turn on a red light after coming to a complete stop behind the limit line. If a right turn on red is allowed, you must first stop and yield to pedestrians crossing the street in front of your and vehicles in the intersection that have the green light. When the intersection is clear, you may carefully make the right turn and continue driving. When driving on snow-covered roads, you should reduce speed by a. About 20 miles per hour. b. About 10 miles per hour. c. About 5 miles per hour. d. About one half the normal driving speed. When driving on snow-covered roads, you should reduce speed by d. About one half the normal driving speed. Driving on snow-packed roads can pose additional hazards. Traction is greatly reduced, and driving too fast is a quick way to lose control of your vehicle and crash. In general, it is typically recommended to reduce your driving speed by about one half when driving in the snow. Blind spots around a large vehicle are what, then the blind spots around a car? A. The same. B. Smaller. C. Bigger. D. None of these. Blind spots around a large vehicle are C. Bigger than the blind spots around a car. Whenever you're sharing the road with a large vehicle like a truck, tractor trailer, or bus, it is important to remember that larger vehicles have larger blind spots around them. The blind spots of larger vehicles, like trucks, are known as the no zones. Under no circumstances should you stay in the blind spot of a larger vehicle for more time than it takes to pass. With a basic Class C driver's license a person may drive a. a motorcycle b. a commercial vehicle c. a two-axle vehicle with a gross vehicle weight rating of 26,000 pounds or more d. a two-axle vehicle with a gross vehicle weight rating of 26,000 pounds or less. With a basic Class C driver's license a person may drive d a two-axle vehicle with a gross vehicle weight rating of 26,000 pounds or less. A standard Class C driver's license is what is required to operate passenger vehicles on public roads. In most states, the Class C license allows you to operate any two-axle vehicle with a gross vehicle weight rating of 26,000 pounds or less. A curb painted red means 
a. No stopping, parking, or standing at any time. b. You can only stop to load or unload passengers. c. You can only park there for a maximum of 10 minutes. d. Stopping, parking, or standing is allowed if there are no fire hydrants nearby. A curb painted red means a. No stopping, parking, or standing at any time. The color painted on the side of the curb indicates what kind of stopping, waiting, loading, or parking is allowed. A curb painted red means no parking, no standing, no stopping. In other words, you cannot stop at a red painted curb for any reason. If you damage an unattended vehicle, you must a. Leave the scene immediately. B. Find the owner or leave a note. C. Call your insurance company. D. Call a tow truck to have the vehicle moved. If you damage an unattended vehicle you must. B. Find the owner or leave a note. If you are driving and you hit an unattended vehicle or a parked car, there are some steps you'll need to take. First, you'll need to make a reasonable attempt to find the owner. If there are people nearby. This includes asking if anyone knows who owns the car. If the car is parked in a neighborhood, this could include knocking on someone's door and asking them. If you are not able to find the owner of the vehicle, you are required to leave a note that includes your full name, your address, your contact information, the circumstances of the accident. When driving at night on a dimly lit street, you should a. Always use your high beams. b. Avoid driving faster than your headlights can illuminate the road ahead. C. Drive no faster than 10 miles per hour. D. Drive as you normally would. When driving at night on a dimly lit street, you should B. Avoid driving faster than your headlights can illuminate the road ahead. When the only light you have is the light that is coming from your headlights, you need to drive slow enough so that you'll be able to stop within the distance that your headlights can illuminate. If you drive faster than this, you will not have enough time to react and stop if a hazard appears in the road. If there are no other vehicles around, you can use your high beam headlights to help you illuminate more of the road. When can a motorcyclist use a complete traffic lane? A. At all times. B. On roads with two or more lanes traveling in the same direction. C. When there are no other vehicles behind them. D. When they are preparing to turn. When can a motorcyclist use a complete traffic lane? A. At all times. Just like passenger vehicles and trucks, motorcycles are entitled to a full lane of traffic at all times. Never drive beside a motorcyclist in the same lane. Motorcycles need to utilize the full lane of traffic in order to place themselves in the safest lane position based on traffic conditions, weather, and road conditions. If you drive too close to a motorcycle, you will take away its escape routes and space cushion and increase the likelihood of a collision. Great job! Here are some of your next steps to getting your learner's permit or driver's license. Read and study the official driver handbook from your state DMV. Take more free practice tests at puedomanejar.com. Gather all your necessary forms and documents before you visit the DMV office. Before you know it, you'll be driving in your very own car all by yourself. puedomanejar.com. Free DMV practice tests and much more to help you pass your real exams. Visit us today.